Welcome to Two Prophets Org with Edward McKinney. Today is April 25, 2010. I am speaking from Big Sky, Montana, the mountain of God. Today's topic, how do you or people you know worship the beast? How do people worship the beast? This is the most important subject that we could discuss for anybody who is a Christian to discuss because people who worship the beast, we are told in the book of Revelation, are enemies of God. Jesus is returning to destroy people who worship the beast. Now, people are really confused about this because they don't know what it means to worship the beast. They hope that they do not worship the beast. But how would they know? They don't know who the beast is. So what I'm offering is a book, a book called Nebuchadnezzar to Gorbachev, The Story of Babylon. And this explains the worship of the beast. It identifies the beast of the book of Revelation. It begins by explaining to you what the mark of the beast is. And nobody has known in recent history what the mark of the beast is. Because the mark of the beast has not been in Bibles since the very first Bibles were created about 95 A.D. In the original Bibles, there was literally a logo, a symbol, a mark of the beast. Now this mark has disappeared from human understanding because of the retranslating of Bibles. The mark of the beast was turned into the number of the beast. Now, the mark of the beast and the number of the beast are two separate things. They can't be both. Either you have a number or you have the mark. The mark is not the number 666. And in this book, you need to read it to examine the research, to go back to 95 AD to find out what the original and real symbol of the beast was that John the Revelator talked about. And you would be interested to know that the words of John that described the mark of the beast were changed by translators into words that described the number of the beast, which is 666. But what good does this number do you? Because you need to know what the symbol is. And this book gives you the symbol. And because you know what the symbol or logo is, you know who this logo belongs to. He's a modern, highly respected world leader. And his symbol is the mark of the beast. That's why you have to get this book find out these things because if, do you want to go to heaven of course you do so you have to make sure that you do not worship this man or follow this man who knows you may have religious social economic political beliefs that are right in tune with this man you know what that's going to get you hellfire eternal damnation and death If you follow this man, you are going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's why this book is so important. There are different dimensions to the worship of the beast. There's religious, economic, social levels. And then there is the very personal level that you as a Christian really need to understand and deal with in your life. 
And that is why I expanded my program to 30 minutes, because next time we're going to open the phone lines to you. And you may call in and discuss situations that you've been in, and in order to relate it to the worship of the beast. We all know people who follow the beast. We have all been victimized by people who follow the beast. We have all been hurt by, damaged by, and stolen from people who worship the beast. And it won't take long during the course of your conversation when you describe your experiences to identify people who follow the beast, people who have hurt you because they are predators. And on a very personal level, the worship of the beast is defined as to be a predator because the beast is a predator. He is the ultimate predator and he represents the ultimate establishment on earth that is predatory. So next time, I hope that you will phone in and share your experiences because you are going to help educate other people. They're going to go, oh, now I understand what it means to worship the beast. Now I can recognize people who worship the beast. And if you're humble, you will even recognize that you, in some regards, in some ways, have also worshipped the beast. And this keeps you like a barrier out of heaven. When the resurrection comes and God is looking around, he is looking for people who have refused to worship the beast. They have refused to be a predator. That is the value of our unique program that we're offering beginning next week, same time, because we are going to explain this and discuss this in detail so that you can go, oh, now I understand, and you can be begin working on yourself and hopefully influence people that you know to stop their worship the beast. You want your friends and relatives to go to heaven with you, don't you? You don't want to go to heaven and leave your sons and daughters, your children, your spouses, your friends. No, you want heaven to be a happy place where everybody you know and love is there so that you can all celebrate together. You do not want to be one of the uh, sleeping virgins who did not take oil in their lamps to meet Jesus at his return. Okay, in order to kick this off, let's consider ways that people worship the beast. This way you know what to talk about if you phone in, and I hope you do. One of the ways that people worship the beast is to prey upon other people. In order to successfully prey upon the other people, they create confusion. For example, a lion in the jungle, does he just walk upon a, a impala or some other animal and say, hey, here I am, I'm coming to kill you and to eat you? No. He hides in the tall brush and he sneaks up slowly in a crouching position. And then when he's as close to the prey as he can get, he louts lets out a loud roar that totally confounds and confuses, disorientates the impala or deer until the impala or deer doesn't know what to do. And before they know it, the lion is upon them. And what is the first thing a lion does when he's upon a prey? He bites it in the throat in order to strangle it and keep it from crying out. 
And think about it. Aren't there human predators who want to take advantage of you, to steal from you, to abuse you, and they don't want you to cry out in pain or send off an alarm? Why? Because they want to get away with it. They want to kill you, devour you, take advantage of you, steal from you, and get away with it. How do they get away with it? They keep it quiet so that nobody knows what's going on. Plus, there are are other lions in the tall grass, and they want to jump on their prey without the herd running away. Now, last time I mentioned that there are three major institutions of every society. They are government, business, and religion. And we discussed the uh, health care bill as an example of the confusion that Satan creates in government. And we use the example of Enron of the confusion that Satan creates in business in order to take advantage of people. Let's talk about religion. That is a very touchy subject, isn't it? Nobody really wants to talk about religion. But there are religious leaders who worship the beast. They're just like the lions in the tall grass. They want to kill and devour people and then for the people to keep their mouths shut. We read about this in the paper, don't we? How uh, homosexuals got into the Catholic Church and then they couldn't resist taking advantage of the naive little children. The Catholic Church made a deal with the devil when it hired in homosexuals to be priests because it was just a matter of time until those homosexuals, some of them, not all of them, would begin to abuse children. And this is an example of how Satan takes over institutions or infiltrates, how Satan infiltrates institutions. And there are other examples, but we ran out of time. Don't worry, I expended, I extended my time. We have 30 minutes, and instead of me talking constantly, I want to hear about you. So next time, tune in again at blogtalkradio.com slash edward-mckinney. Until next time, friends, this is Edward D. McKinney, and I certainly look forward to hearing from you. And I'm with twoprofits.org.